the master tavern keeper's history of the old world. And so, in the early spring of 1506, the five members of the inner circle of the Knight's Panther, led by my uncle Dieter von Torikelm, faced a bloodthirsty mob of 30 or more black orcs, themselves led by the infamous Tusk Gora, outside the walls of the town of Essen in Ostermark. My uncle immediately summoned his knightly brothers upon spying their foe from the town's walls. Valent, Bothor, Conrad, Elmar, our enemy has come. Prepare for battle. We cannot wait, brothers. The orcs will soon be clambering up these walls if we do not engage them. Open the gate. We ride out. If I am to die this day, it'll be in the thick of combat, not skulking behind stone battlements. My lord. Yes, Captain. Ah, uh, no, Captain. I see that look in your eyes. You would join us out there in death, wouldn't you? I forbid it. You cannot, dear Dieter. Oh, honorable Margrave, Captain. Lord von Tolikan has no power to prevent us laying down our lives in defense of our home. If we are all fated to die, then let us die well and together. Forgive me, Gustav. I will not deny that your blades will be welcome, and I know that look of yours. You will not be dissuaded, will you? Let it be, then. Let us go to the halls of Moor, together. And so, my uncle and his four fellow knights trotted out at the head of a ragtag force in defence of the town of Essen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, about how many warriors are we talking about here, Master Tavern Keeper? Ah, well, my uncle said that the Margrave led about two dozen militia, and that the halberdiers had just under the same number. The Black Orcs, on the other hand, had split into three separate mobs, each numbering around ten. So numerically, the Imperial forces were greater, but in terms of breadth of quality, the Black Orcs had the definite edge. The Orcs stood with the forest to their backs and the main road and fields that led to the town directly before them. The defenders stood in front of the main gate of the town. Those that were too weak, too young, or too old to fight, were watching from the walls. My uncle led his fellow knights from the centre of the battle line. To his right, his old friend, Gustav von Schultz, the Margrave of Essen, stood with the remaining halberdiers of the East Marches, whilst holding the left flank were the militia, led by the local priest of Moor, a man called uh, Francis Schwarz. But uh, almost as soon as the warriors of Essen had taken up their positions, the orcs attacked. <laughs> Thank you. 
three orc units began to pelt across the field of battle towards my uncle and the defenders of Essen. There was no time for hesitation. Gustav! Father Schwarz! Hold the line! Knights! Charge! Yeah! The five knights raced towards the central mob of black orcs, led by Tusk Gora himself. The halberdiers and the militia readied themselves to receive the charges of the other two mobs of black orcs. The first into the fight were the knights. Honor the panther! Kill the greenskins! Once more, the lances of the knights impaled their greenskin counterparts, halving the strength of the orc mob in one fell swoop. But they failed to kill Tuscora, and the massive black orc warboss led the survivors in a brutal reprisal, tearing into the knights' mounts and sending their riders flying this way and that as horse blood rained down upon the melee. <laughs> To my uncle's left, the militia suffered a similar fate as the charging orcs crashed into their lines. The priest of Moors, chanting, drowned out by the screams of the dying. It was inevitable. These irregulars were truly no better than straw dogs. Ock, what do you mean they're Septimus? Ah, sorry. In Café, they use something called straw dogs. Straw made into the shape of a dog, which they call a chugo, in lieu of real dogs, for the purposes of sacrifice. Ah, oh, right. I understand what you mean. Anyhow, please continue. <coughs> well... The Black Orcs made mincemeat out of the denizens of Essen without the loss of a single greenskin. As to the halberdiers on the right flank, here the Orcs too smashed into the unit, but it did not crumple. Their heavy halberds were brought down hard on the thick plates of their foes. And many got no further than that, but some precious few found weak spots and chinks in the Orcs' armor, drawing blood and severing. With the charge broken, the meat grind of protracted melee began, and the brave halberdiers soon saw their numbers whittled away as comrades and friends fell to the uh, brutal weapons of the greenskins. Back with my uncle, he and his brother knights found themselves facing off against the fiercest of the black orcs in hand-to-hand combat. Arend Tumpel, slayer of the beast of Didon, fought bravely against two gigantic greenskins, beheading one but being run through by the other. Both of Velda, defender of the town of Garndorf, avenged Arend and then slew Tuskagora's last surviving bodyguard, only to be cut open and killed by the broken blade of the stricken, dying orc. Conrad Talbach, scourge of the beastmen of the Farlick Hills, cut the orc's musician to ribbons with a flurry of swordsmanship. And Elmar Vestman, saviour of Morkenfurt, struck down the greenskin standard bearer, trampling the foul flag beneath his bloody boots. And so to my uncle, Dieter von Torlikhelm, the avenger of Karaberg. He faced a pair of black orcs, neatly slicing the head off one cutting the legs out from under the second, and then plunging his sword through its skull. This, though, left only him, Elmar, and Conrad, 
to face off against Tuscora himself. <laughs> Stomp on your heads! Conrad leapt forward at the Black Orc boss's words, his naked blade eager to spill more blood. But the gigantic orc bloodily cleft him in two from temple to groin. My uncle and Elmar immediately assumed more defensive stances and looked for an opening. Elsewhere, the tidings were equally grim. The halberdiers were losing the fight to the orcs. The militia had already completely vanished. The moans and wails of the soldiers' widows and orphans, audible from the town's walls. And with their blades blooded, the surviving orcs were now coming to the aid of their war boss. The day was all but lost. When suddenly, the sound of a war drum could be heard, coming from the forest. All stopped. Out from the trees appeared the face of my uncle's best friend Hans, his sword and shield held up high, although he bore no drum. That belonged to the large gathering of dwarf troll slayers that burst out of the tree line at full pelt, heading straight towards the orcs. Tuscora turned and bellowed at the interlopers. <laughs> but his war cry was cut short by the impaling blade of Elmar Vesman, savior of Morkenfort, who thrust his sword straight through a gap in the plated armor of the Black Orc boss. Tuscora span, wrenching the sword from the knight's grip, before taking off Elmar's head. Oh. But this left him open, and my uncle returned the favor with a decapitating slice. Just as the slayers stream past the melee into the remaining greenskins, and the bloodbath truly began. Death to the Eric! Kill them all! Ulrich's beard? What happened? Where did these slayers come from, Master Tavernkeeper? Why, Carrick Kadrin, of course. The time has come to reveal Hans's mission, methinks. Ach, go on then. Don't leave us dangling. Of course. Well, do you recall that my uncle found the tale of the origins of the Black Orcs upon a dwarf scroll penned by a runesmith of Carrick Kadrin within the bowels of the University of Altdorf? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he kept it. He had already thought of a use for it, beyond mere information gathering. Upon their arrival in Essen, and hearing what his friend, the Margrave, had had to say, he was then convinced of what needed to be done. He gave the scroll to Hans, someone who had fought alongside the High King of Karzakarak and had earned both the respect and friendship of many dwarf nobles, and had the trinkets to prove it. He sent him to Carrick Kadrin to return the scroll to the young King Ungrim. That was not all, though. 
He was also to relate the plight of Essen and the failure of the garrisons of the Dwarf Hold to keep the Black Orcs from crossing Peak Pass. This latter part was the most difficult, as dwarves are, uh, well, quick to take offence, let's say. Oh, yeah, yeah. The leader of my own mercenary warband, Sven Hammerhelm, is very much like that. Ah, 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 yes, I got that impression. Ah, anyway. Hans was successful in his task, and it elicited exactly the response my uncle had gambled everything on. The king requested volunteers from amongst the slayers within the hold, and a bloodthirsty mob of rabid dwarves came to the aid of Essen and wiped the greenskins off the map. Oh, yeah, huzzah! Indeed. Essen was saved. The Margrave had lost an eye in the melee, but survived. Of the halberdiers, six still lived and went on to rebuild their regiment. Of the Knight's Panther, only my uncle and Hans survived. With great sorrow, they returned to Karaberg and interred the bodies of their fallen comrades within the crypts of the Order. And that is it. Oh, thank you, Master Tavernkeeper. That was exciting. I think I need another drink, though. Ah, me too. I'm out. Oh, but before we do, I have a question. Where's your man? I mean, your dwarf, Strolvar, not amongst the dwarves at this battle. Wasn't he in Carrick Cadron at the time? Ah, very perceptive of you, uh, Master Alchemist. But no, he wasn't. He was already wandering the world. And, well, perhaps we should finally get back to those wanderings.